as you can see, I'm wearing a sad hat because today is a sad, somber day. Because what the heck? Get the f out of here! How dare you interrupt? Togon. Today is a sad day because. I'm calling you out, Flammy. I'm calling you out. You dare, you dare try to make some generalizations in a video, like a um, cool generalization, an interesting generalization. Well, I'm not having any of it, because have I got a generalization for you. And if you don't think mine is good enough, then I suggest maybe you step it up a notch, huh? And do a, do a better one? Hmm? Hmm? Bring it on? You know? Let's see. Let's see how this works out. So today, I've got some gosh darn good mathematics for you. And it's still in the vein of generating functions that I've been doing lately. But, you know, as soon as I get a good, a good match, I'll step it up to something else. Something that I have in mind. Something that I think is very, very good. Unless, of course, that's the thing that you do in response to this, which would be pretty embarrassing. Oh, God. You have inadvertently set up the challenge of your life buddy. So let's go. Welcome to the start of the bloodbath. What I deem the generalization war. Who will come out as top general? Who knows? But in lieu of the blood that will be spilled, I've picked brown. My trusty cup of joe is here to protect me. There is nothing I cannot do. So today we're going to explore very, very neat generalization to the generating function that I showed for the Fibonacci sequence. So if you'll recall, the nth Fibonacci number, starting at 0, we'll say, so n is in the set of natural numbers and 0, then the Fibonacci numbers are 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, etc., where each next term is achieved by adding the previous two together. 0 and 1 are seed values, so 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, etc, etc. And we wanted to find the generating function for this sequence. And what we were able to discover is that if we define the function capital F of x to be the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the nth Fibonacci number times the nth power of x, you end up with a lovely function x divided by 1 minus x minus x squared right, which has a radius of convergence of 1 over phi, the golden ratio. Now, this is all well and good, it's very pretty, it's very nice. The problem is, this is only one sequence. This isn't, you know, general enough. So what I want to do is I want to completely overhaul this in such a way that I can find the generating function for any sort of Fibonacci-ish sequence, or uh, fibonacci sh as uh, as uh, my 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 uh, Deutsche Freund might pronounce it, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to instead of starting with zero and one, this is supposed to be general, right? We're going to start with any two numbers that we want. So what should we call them? We should call them a and b, and those will be our seed values. So if you wanted to get the Fibonacci sequence, you'd have to pick a to be zero and b to be one. Well, let's see what we can get from here. Well, we have to just do it Fibonacci style, right? A plus B is A plus B. B plus A plus B is A plus 2B. Then you add the next two things together. You get A plus A plus B plus 2B, which is 2A plus 3B. And that goes on forever, right? So that's our general Fibonacci sequence for any two starting seed values, a and b. But if you have a look at the, the values here, it always seems to be that the coefficients of a and b are Fibonacci numbers. And that's absolutely no coincidence. If you keep going, you'll end up with 3a plus 5b, then 5a plus uh, 8b, etc., etc. And each coefficient of a and b will be some sort of Fibonacci number. But you can see that they're never the same Fibonacci number, except right here. But that's actually a facade. They are both one, but one of these is the first Fibonacci number and one of them is the second. So they never ever have the same Fibonacci coefficient. But we can actually determine what those things are. All we have to do is be a little clever. So this is going to be our original Fibonacci standpoint, and this is going to be our general Fibonacci sequence. So I will call this, uh, we'll call this sequence little f, 
right? So big F is the original Fibonacci sequence, and its generating function is x divided by 1 minus x minus x squared. And so this new Fibonacci sequence, the general Fibonacci sequence, lowercase f, starts with any two seed values a and b, and we simply add those two things together exactly like you would with the regular Fibonacci sequence to get our general one. And we're going to find the generating function for this sequence, little f sub n. So, how can we do that? Well, first, we need to do ourselves a favor and somehow come up with a general rule for each of these terms. It's no coincidence that all of these have Fibonacci numbers as coefficients. We just need to be a little bit clever because it's weird. You start with A and no B, and then you have B and no A, and then every other term after that has some uh, multiple of A added to some multiple of B. So we need to remember something. If we consider the original Fibonacci sequence that starts 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, always adding the two previous terms to get the next, we need to uh, work backwards a little bit. We need to know the negative first Fibonacci number. And we've done that before in a video, right? We just need to know what number do I have to add to 0 to get 1. And that's obvious, right? It's just 1. So the negative first Fibonacci number is 1. And you'll notice that in the first term, these are the coefficients of a and b, 1a plus 0b. And in the next term, it's 0a plus 1b. And in the third term, it's 1a plus 1b. And in the fourth term, it's 1a plus 2b. And then 2a plus 3b. So we can see that starting at the zeroth general Fibonacci number requires us to start with the negative first actual Fibonacci number. So the coefficient of a is always the Fibonacci number that is one less than the part of its sequence, and the coefficient of b is always the Fibonacci number that is the number of that sequence. So we can actually generalize this sequence to say that the little f sequence, the general Fibonacci sequence, is actually equal to the n minus first original Fibonacci number times a plus the nth actual Fibonacci number times b. Because let's consider this, since we're starting at 0, that means we're going to start with the negative first Fibonacci number, which is 1, times a. And the 0 Fibonacci number, 0, times b. So we just get a. And the next term we have, we plug in 1, right? 1 minus 1 is 0, so we get the 0 Fibonacci number, 0, times a, plus the first Fibonacci number, which is 1, times b. And that's how we just get b. And then the next is the first and second Fibonacci number, times a and b, which respectively, which gives 1a plus 1b, and then you know, 1a plus 2b, etc., etc., etc. This is actually the same sequence as our little f, right? Our general Fibonacci number can actually be put in terms of the original Fibonacci numbers, which is absolutely brilliant. And so we're going to use this to find the generating function of our general Fibonacci sequence. And I cannot wait to show you the result because it's beautiful. And it turns out we can actually put it in terms of our original capital F of x, which was the generating function for the OG Fibonacci right? You got to get in the Fibonacci. All right. So, well, we know that these are going to be our coefficients, right? So I'm going to erase this. Let me just adjust my camera slightly. And we want it to be the sum from n equals zero to infinity of these new general Fibonacci numbers times the powers of n. But we just discovered what the new general Fibonacci numbers are in terms of the OG Fibonacci, because we can write it like this, n equals zero to infinity of original Fibonacci n minus 1. <laughs> I gotta stop saying that. The, the, the regular Fibonacci number, uh, but n minus 1, so down 1 index times a plus the nth Fibonacci number times b. That's equal to little f of n, right? We just figured that out, times x to the n. But look at that. We can just distribute x to the n in and expand the, the sum outwards. So what we're going to end up with is two different sums from n equals 0 to infinity. Right? And now we just need to figure out what those sums are. Well, if we take a look at distributing x to the n into the first part, we have the n minus first Fibonacci number times a times x to the n. Well, a is an arbitrary constant that you choose to be the first or, I guess, zeroth seed value of this sequence. So it doesn't depend on n whatsoever. So we can just factor it out. Under the sum, we're left with f sub n minus 1, the n minus first original Fibonacci number, times x to the n. Likewise, with the second sum, we have b, an arbitrary number chosen to be the first seed number that does not depend on n, so we can factor that out times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the nth Fibonacci number times x to the n. 
what we need to do here is we need to add 1 to n for both of these things. So this is going to be equal to a times the sum from n equals negative 1, because if I'm adding 1 to n inside the sum, the index has to go down by 1 to accommodate for that fact, so that the sum is still equal. And adding 1 to that gives us just f sub n, and adding 1 to the power of x gives us x to the power of n plus 1. But now look what we can do here. We can actually factor out this x, right? So I'm going to factor that x out, because x itself does not depend on n. So I can pull it out to the front like that. But notice, these are only slightly different, right? It only has one more term out the front, the negative first term, right? But we already know what the negative first Fibonacci number is. It's 1. So we can actually put this as a sum of two things, the negative first term and the rest of the sum. So we're going to rewrite this first part like this, a times x. And in parentheses, we're going to have the negative first term. All we have to do is plug in negative 1 for n, and we're going to get 1 as the negative first Fibonacci number divided by x, or times x to the negative first power, right? So we get 1 over x plus the rest of the sum, which goes from n equals 0 to infinity of the nth Fibonacci number times x to the n. But you'll notice something very, very nice. What do we have? We have two occurrences of our handy dandy capital F of x, right? These are the generating functions for the Fibonacci numbers. So we can actually replace these with capital F of x. Isn't that amazing? So we can replace those with capital F of x, and we're going to end up with a times x times the quantity 1 over x plus capital F of x, which is the generating function for the OG Fibonacci, plus b times capital F of x. And now all we have to do is combine things together, and we can have our generating function for our general Fibonacci numbers. So we just multiply this in. a times x divided by x is just a, right? So we have a plus a times x times capital F of x plus b times capital F of x. If we work that out and just sort of distribute or, or pull things out, we end up with a plus a times x plus b times capital F of x. So we end up with this really, really nice formula that isn't quite explicit yet because we have to replace capital F of x with our actual generating function for the Fibonacci numbers. So we'll know exactly what function little f of x is. But now that we've done all of this working out, observe it, make sure it's all correct. You know, I wouldn't want to be wrong while I'm destroying Papa Flammy's whole career uh, with this amazing, amazing generalization that I just thought of. It's so good. So I'm going to rewrite this up here and then we're going to be good to go. And then we're going to find the final function, and we're going to maybe throw in a couple of examples just to really be sure that, that I know what I'm talking about. So... So we've just shown that our little f of x is equal to our zeroth seed number plus that same a times x plus our first seed number times our original Fibonacci generating function, capital F. Replacing capital F with the function we know it to be, we end up with a plus x times a times x plus b, all over 1 minus x minus x squared. And this, my friends, is the generating function for the general Fibonacci, the general Fibonacci sequence. I deem this to be general Fibonacci equals little f of x, as I defined it before. This is the general Fibonacci. You got nothing on it. You got nothing on it. Nothing. Nothing. Unless you do. In which case, I got more. Don't you worry. I got you. But you got nothing, Papa. You got nothing. You are no longer the Papa. So, the best thing to do now would be to test this with a few, maybe three, examples. So we're going to pick A and B to be specific values. First, we should do the most sensible option and pick A and B to be 0 and 1, just to make sure that this really does work. So if we let A equals 0, b equal 1, what do we end up with? Well, we end up with 0 right here. So we get 0 plus x times 0 times x plus 1 over 1 minus x minus x squared. Well, this goes away, and this goes away, and then we just get 1 times x in the numerator, so that even goes away. And we're simply left with 
x divided by 1 minus x minus x squared, which is exactly the generating function for the Fibonacci numbers, which you get from starting off with a equals 0 and b equals 1. Cool! So it really does work in the nicest case. What I want to do before I do my second example is actually sort of simplify this just a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually multiply the top and bottom of a by this denominator so that I can combine them into one piece, while also distributing this x into the numerator. Distributing stuff in, we end up with a minus ax minus ax squared plus ax squared plus bx all over 1 minus x minus x squared. Well, would you look at that? We get some nice cancellations. The ax squareds go away. And we are left with, what do we have? We have a minus a minus b times x all over 1 minus x minus x squared. Right? This is a sort of nicer way of writing it. So you can tell that no matter what two seed values you pick in the beginning, you're always going to end up with a constant minus some multiple of x divided by 1 minus x minus x squared. So it will always be a linear function divided by a quadratic function. Take a look at what happens when we pick a and b to be, say, the Luca number. So I'm going to rewrite this in our new form, right? And then I'm going to go from there. Now let a equal 2 and b equal 1. And we end up with 2 minus the quantity 2 minus 1 times x divided by 1 minus x minus x squared, which means that the generating function for the Luca numbers is 2 minus x divided by 1 minus x minus x squared. Or we could write it by multiplying the top and bottom by negative 1. We get x minus 2 divided by x squared minus x minus 1. So that right there is our capital L of x, the generating function for the Luca numbers. And just to really hammer home how nice this, this general function is, we're going to do one more example. I'm going to pull from one of my favorite YouTube channels ever, and that would be Numberphile. And guess what I'm going to plug in for A and B? That's right, I'm going to plug in the goddamn Brady numbers, baby. We're doing the Brady numbers. We're not going to leave poor old Brady out of this. Oops, I erased what I meant to keep. Gosh darn. What are the Brady numbers again? So for the Brady numbers, I found what they are again. So we're going to do capital B sub N. Pick A to be 2,308. And the second one was B equals 4,261. So these are the seed values for the Brady numbers, which means we get as a generating function for the Brady numbers 2,308 minus the quantity 2,000. 308 minus 4,261 times x, all over 1 minus x minus x squared. We end up with 2,308 plus 1,953x divided by 1 minus x minus x squared. And my friends, we have the generating function for the Brady numbers, another Fibonacci sh kind of sequence. Fibonacci sh as a uh, like I said, as uh, our Deutsche Poppy would say. So um, I think I've proven my general generalization generally enough. So uh, generally speaking, you should, in general, put them up, Papa. Show me who's boss. Because I think you might inadvertently end up showing me that I'm boss. But, you know, if you're up to the challenge... Quick little thing, this channel has an Instagram, so it is at what the hectagon, of course, and it has a Twitter, and it is of course naturally, of course, naturally, naturally, of course, also at what the hectagon. And my email is the incorrectly spelled what the hectagon. Why spell check before you make the email, right? That you can't then change at gmail.com. Now, all of these are in the description if you don't want to have to somehow watch the video and pause it and actually write it down. That's the, uh, that's the stuff. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye. Uh,